Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes. Working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. Hey everyone, it's Igor and Ryan here for Project Uproar, helping you get closer to your ideal self every day. And today, we're gonna have some fun because we both love reading books, and we've read a lot of the same books. We're just gonna be talking about books that have um, shaped us, that have influenced us, but that should help anyone get out of a rut as well. And I'll start off this time with How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie, Time Tested Methods for Conquering Worry. And that's a great book because right away it'll give you practical tips. One of them would be, you know, go help others, take the focus off of yourself, put it on someone else and try to do good things without getting found out. Right away, it's getting you doing something, right? Another thing is keep busy. So there are all these tips that someone who's feeling in a rut could use to right away feel better within their lives and it has the added bonus of teaching you time-tested ways to get over worry, which worry can be a problem like at any point in your life, you know, people usually have worries. So this will make you, even in good times, the good times will be better. And in the bad times, it'll really help out. The second book that I'm going to share is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. This book is really great because it's a simple message. It's a message taken from the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius. What stands in the way becomes the way, meaning the obstacles that you face in your life could actually be beneficial to you. They're not, they're not harmful. And so often when we're in a rut, we view obstacles and bad things that happen to us as things we want to avoid. So we want to clear them out of our path and only experience good things. What Ryan Holiday is saying is that no, bad things, seemingly bad things that may happen to us actually help us to grow and become stronger people. And the great thing about this book is it's not like a dense theoretical book that you have to make your way through. It's packed with very relatable stories and very powerful stories. For example, Thomas Edison and how his house burned down and how he was okay with it burning down and how he said this would allow him to build his wealth again. Stories like that, which I think are um, very well known, but at the same time, we don't think of them as stories that can help influence us get through struggles. So Ryan Holiday, Obstacle is the Way is book number two of a book that could get you out of a rut. Exactly. And with Stoicism, there's the idea of anything, problem, any challenge, any adversity you have to face is actually an opportunity for virtue. So it's not a bad thing. We definitely recommend a lot of Stoicism books if you're into that. Um, next up, number three, we have Robin Sharma, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. This is one of my first self-development books proper, I guess you could say that I read and it's really good for just getting anybody who has been less exposed to these thoughts um, and also just for people who want to refresh these positive thoughts. It's great because it gives you those tools, the way frameworks for viewing the world that will really help you out in life and it pretty much covers a lot of different things like whether it's meditation, whether it's telling you to read positive books, whether it's getting you to write down your goals, um, life goals in a journal, which I did and crazy, I went back later and all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I've achieved this, I've achieved this. So it was really very interesting to see that and that book had a big impact. So I definitely recommend anyone who's wondering about self-development, whether it's right for them, that book is going to give you a great kind of little bit of all these different aspects of self-development from thought, positive thoughts to meditation to physical goals and journaling. It's a really great read. I have here is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by Mark Manson. Nice, not giving an it's, F. It's a great book that you could find often at Walmart shoppers. It's, it's so uh, widely published. It's not just at like Chapters or Amazon. And the great thing about uh, this book that really helped me was it taught me how there are certain things in life, specifically worries, that you should only focus on a certain amount of worries and a certain amount of stressors. So in life, we're going to deal with uh, things that bother us, whether it be our, what our boss thinks of us, what particular other people think of us. And that 
eventually spirals and ends up causing us to become very stressed. It could cause illness if we worry too much. What Mark Mance is trying to say in this book is that we should only focus on the most important things to worry about and not try to worry about every little thing. So try to lessen the, bur the burden of worry. He also has a lot of interesting things that relate to stoicism, such as we are the ones that are more in charge of creating our own happiness compared with hoping to become happy through external needs. He says we have to be the ones who are in charge of our own happiness. He also says how in life suffering is inevitable, which is a very universal idea, and how we should focus on the things that will bring us the most bearable suffering. So no matter what we're going to suffer in life, similar to obstacles the way. So everyone is going to suffer. He calls it a shit sandwich. Everyone's gonna have their own shit sandwich, but it's a matter of choosing the one that's best for you or choosing the suffering that's best for you that you're most able to bear. Exactly. And there's a lot of good stories and examples of figures, just like in the obstacles the way of people Stories I'll stay with you of people who you wouldn't think would be unhappy and are, and people who are unhappy, who you think would be unhappy but are actually happy, which will surprise you and show you that happiness is not really about you know external things. Which brings us beautifully to a new earth by Eckhart Tolle. It could be good at any point, but especially let's say now you've achieved a certain level of material success and you still feel like hmm, this is it, I kind of feel empty inside. Well, Eckhart Tolle is a great person to read for that because all of a sudden he's bringing it into the present moment beyond materialistic things. You're actually learning about ego and pain body, which are two things that are very useful to know about. You can pinpoint where your ego is coming in. You can learn to not identify with the ego. It brings uh, a lot of importance on mindfulness and being aware of your thoughts and not identifying with the ego, uh, identifying other people's pain body, which is pretty much when people freak out, right? It's not necessarily them, it's their pain body. And you learn to actually be aware of that and to um, live in the present moment enough that you fix and work towards fixing your own ego problems, your own pain body. So in that regard, like it's a really good book. And especially if, your issue is not, um, oh, I need to make money, I want to make money. If it's like, oh, I have money, but I still don't feel fulfilled, I think A New Earth is a really good book to read. And if you're in that situation like Igor was telling us, I think another great book you should check out is called Essentialism. Essentialism is a book that applies minimalist thought. That is the idea of thinking about the things that are physically the most important to us and trying to get rid of the things that are not. Uh, it takes that idea and tries to apply it to the way we schedule events in our lives. So I would say if you're in a rut, sometimes the reason you're in a rut is because you're balancing so many things. You have so many things on the go. I know myself, last year I was balancing three or four different jobs in order to try to accumulate some money and it was causing me distress. And what this book teaches us is that just like we have to go through our closet and clean out some things that we don't use, we have to a lot of times go through our schedule in life and figure out the things that are not the most important and get rid of them. So um, this book talks about the process of editing, which just like to edit a paper is to go through different parts of your life carefully and choose what to tinker with and choose what to cut out completely. And I think that is important because so often in life, we think the most important thing is to accumulate money. How do we do that? We have to have our hands in a million different things. Well, what happens often when we do that is we don't move in any sort of productive direction when we're tied up with many things. And at the same time, it frustrates us because it could cut into things like free time. And that's really important time for ourselves. So if you're in a state where you find you have your hands in too many projects, you are going from job to job to job. I think this book could really help you cut the things that are not as important in your life and focus on those that are. Definitely. And very much related to that, we have an actual minimalism book, uh, Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki, The New Japanese Minimalism. And I really like this. So this is a, a young Japanese man, which also uh, you know, I could relate to more because I'm also young. I'm in 26. 
So that, like most of the readers, most of the writers were reading are actually, you know, older. So it was nice to read some, something from somebody younger and it really spoke to me. It's also about um, being careful by what you possess and how your things can end up uh, possessing you in a sense. There's a lot of Fight Club quotes in here. There's a lot of really cool examples. It's more philosophy than just about how minimalism uh, works with things. It goes beyond that. It goes, uh, it shows you what's possible. And for me, it really impacted me because I started looking around and noticing that I buy a lot of stuff that I don't really use. And in the past, I've paid like crazy amounts of money for stuff that I thought I would use, but then I don't. And then there's so many books that I buy and then I don't get around to reading them because something else catches my interest, I buy that. And so it just got me to reflect because Right now, I'm okay in like a financial situation, but even before I was, I was spending money on stuff I didn't really care about like, let's say brand name clothing or about on like books that I won't read and stuff like that. And once you actually start realizing that, okay, so you're giving money, you're usually working for money. So really, while you're buying all this stuff that you might not even need, that you might not even use, um, you're gonna have to work more hours for that, especially if you have like a nine to five kind of job. So the money you have can equal free time for you. And yet if you're spending that on all these things, you're gonna have to work more for this stuff you're not using that you don't care about. So this book is really reminding you that, hey, what's important? Like, what do you think is important? Look at that, um, focus on that, and then do that rather than living unconsciously and spending money on everything. And for that reason, uh, I truly recommend it and I really like the writing style as well. This next book I have uh, is another Stoicism book. It is called A Handbook for New Stoics. It's by Massimo Pellucci, who has written other Stoic books. And the thing I love about this book that is so different from other books about Stoicism is it's not a book that talks about Stoic history, or at least doesn't focus on Stoic history and the various Stoics. It's very much a book that gets you to do exercises, in fact, weekly exercises, to get you to practice Stoic philosophy in your daily life. So each chapter is a different week's worth of exercise. And what it does is it gets you to write in the book, reflect on different things like what's in your control, what is not in your control, which is unlike other books which just tell you this is a principle, the dichotomy of control, and then just leaves it and goes into something else. It gets you to actually think about the principle, reflect on it, and what I think is also cool is it leaves a box at the end and says, was this exercise useful? Do you want to incorporate this into your daily life? So it gets you to self-reflect. Mm -hmm. So it's a great book to, not only if you want to use it for a year, but you could also just learn the principles and figure out what, work for, what works for you and figure out what principles you want to incorporate in your daily life. So it's a very practical book. I know Stoicism is all about practicality. Very practical book that you could incorporate right away. And I find the read is a very accessible and easy read that you could get through. If you wanted to read it, you could get through it just in like a couple days. So I highly recommend Handbook for New Stoics. Yeah, and a lot of these books that we talk about will have like suggestions like, oh, do this or do that. But it's very easy when you're reading a book to just read through it. This is almost like a workbook, like you have stuff to fill out like Ryan said. So for that reason, I'm really glad you included it. And I think um, I forgot to include one really practical book. So I think that's awesome that we got one of those. The next one, book number nine, is The Game by Neil Strauss. Like I actually read this book, which is about picking up girls, funny enough, in high school. And the reason that I suggest this book, besides the fact that it's a lot of fun, is that that actually taught me in high school that social be like social skills let's say are something that's not just you're born with necessarily you can actually uh, learn practice and improve and really that book and the whole um, kind of pickup community that it's associated with is kind of what actually got me into self-development and what got me open-minded enough eventually to read the monk who sold his Ferrari. So that book definitely changed my life and I think it's super entertaining. And if you think um, you're in a rut, a great way might be to read this book, uh, start working on your own social skills 
and that might help you a lot too. Yes, yeah, so the last book we have, number 10, is The Courage to be Disliked. This is another book that is widely popular here in Canada and the United States. Now, while I don't agree with everything in the book, I think the first thing that I love about it is the style. It's very different, different in the sense that it is a conversation between a professor and a student. So it's this dialogue, kind of like Socratic conversation. And it's just about a student who goes to a professor because the student is very upset with his life. And the professor is trying to comfort the student and basically convince the student that he's in charge of his own happiness and that even though bad things happened to the student in the past, he has the ability to change his life around. Uh, it is inspired by the psychology of Alfred Adler. And like I said, I don't 100% agree with Alfred Adler's ideas as a whole. There are some things I don't agree, there are some things I do agree with. I think it is a very inspiring book. And again, very accessible because it's a dialogue format. So often we're reading books that are just prose and telling you how to live. This is getting you to learn about some of the lessons through conversation, which I think is very unique. And so I think it's a great book, especially for young people to figure out uh, their life. So even though bad things happen to you, we have the power to change based on our mindset and how mindset is key to developing a healthy life and getting out of a rut. It's not up to waiting for a big raise or waiting for, to win the lottery. So many people I run into say, I can't wait to win the lottery. Well, that's not reasonable, nor will it probably bring you happiness or get you out of a rut, right? It'll just be temporary. So many people who win the lottery end up spending all their money anyways and then they get back into that rut. This is a book that truly tells you that in order for you to live a good life, you are in charge of it, not someone else or some external thing. Exactly, and I think a lot of these books, just starting to read it will get you in the right mindset so that you already start kind of getting out of that rut and a lot of these books will have practices or inspire you to get moving, get doing different stuff, whether it's starting a project, uh, working towards monetary goals or working towards spiritual goals or whatever it is, it'll get you moving, right? If you feel stuck, all of these books will give you directions to move in, practices to try, and we think that that'll really help. So that's it for this video. Uh, I'm glad we made it. Even we might sometimes when we're in a rut, come back to these to this video and to these books because um, they really did help us out a lot and we hope they help you out. Until next time, see ya.